what's going on guys welcome back today's video we will go over the last method of achieving windows persistence so basically in the previous videos we went over account tampering again we covered backdoors um, backdooring services scheduled tasks and the last video or the recent video we're on backdooring the startup so today we will cover the last the last method of per persistence with windows so which is through mysql server or ms microsoft sql server so as you know microsoft sql server is uh, software to deal with databases in microsoft windows server so what we're going to do here we're going to um, cover the methods that we can use to achieve the persistence through microsoft sql server so basically in order to achieve that as i told you guys previously the very first prerequisites for per persistence is access to the compromised machine so after you after you compromise the machine escalate the privileges you can think of persistence as a way to get back to the machine or access the machine whenever you want so suppose that you have um compromised a windows server machine okay and you want to achieve persistence through microsoft sql server uh, that's installed on the compromised machine so to do that we have to go over a couple concepts first okay the first concept is triggers so there are several ways to blend backdoors in microsoft sql server and installations so simply put guys triggers in ms sql server allow it to bind actions to specific events so what are what are the type of events in the databases in general so we have insert we're inserting a row um, we have delete deleting a row or database we have sign in whenever a user signs in to the database sign out and there are also many other triggers so these are called triggers we can use these operations and bind them to specific action for example in this scenario we will bind the insert trigger to a backdoor what's going to happen here is that when a user inserts a row or a value in the database it will trigger the backdoor the backdoor will execute a payload powershell payload that connects to the machine so how is that helpful in maintaining persistence so basically when a user um, is updating the database of their website um, you know database operations or operations are actually continuous all the time so when you have a website and you're using ms sql server you're continuously updating the database right with delete insert modify you're continuously signing in and out so these triggers uh, get executed so often in uh, when you're uh, doing when you're updating your website or creating even a website so basically we are relying on the fact that these triggers are often or frequently executed uh, when a user is working on the website so when a user is working on the website they're actually working on the database so that's uh, where th the idea come from okay so we will bind a backdoor specifically powershell payload to be executed whenever an insert operation is performed on the database okay that's the idea now how to do that the first thing we have to enable something called the xp underscore cmd shell so before creating the trigger we must first reconfigure a few things on the database the very first of which is the xp cmd shell which is a stored procedure by default in ms sql and installation so basically it is a sort procedure that's provided by default in any ms sql and installation and allows you guys to run commands directly in the systems console but the unfortunate fact uh, is that xpc shell comes disabled by default so yes by default it is a stored procedure procedure but it is by default as uh, disabled as well so we have to enable it okay we have to enable the xp underscore cmd shell to be able to execute system commands right so 
without XPC MD shell, we won't be able to um, have the advantage of the backdoor, right? So the backdoor at the end contains or points to a PowerShell script, which is a list of commands. If we aren't able to enable XP underscore CMD shell, the backdoor will not work or the list of the commands will not work. So we have to enable the XP underscore CMD shell and we have the SA user. Now this user is the default user in the MS SQL database or MS SQL program. So basically this user has administrative privileges over the database. So it is an admin. So what we're going to do here when we achieve um, the persistence or when we are trying to achieve the persistence, we rely on the fact that there is a shell through MS SQL server. So by default, if we grant all the privileges of all the users to the SA user, okay, we're able to let SA user execute XP underscore CMD shell. So we must ensure that any website accessing the database can run XP underscore CMD shell, right? So this one, we enable it, and then we have to make sure that the website is able to access it. How do we do that? By default, only database users with the system admin role will be able to do so. So if we are on system admin on the database, we won't be able to execute xp underscore cmd shell that's why it's expected uh, or since it's expected that the applications use a restricted database user we will grant privileges to all users okay to impersonate the sa user which is a default database administrator so the default database administrator the default database administrator sa user now will be able to execute xp underscore cmd shell and subsequently, we will be able to execute the backdoor using the SA user. So that is the brief about how to do it. Okay, now let's do it. So now assume you are the attacker and you get access to the compromise machine. You want to maintain access and you saw that there is an opportunity to do that with the Microsoft SQL Server Management. So let's do this. So we open the very first step is to open the program. Now we will be asked for the authentication. You can connect with the current credentials. All right. So now the very first thing guys is to enable the XP underscore CMD shell. So what we're going to do here, we're going to go to new query. And here to enable it, we have to execute a list of commands. So SP underscore configure show advanced options. We close the code and then comma one reconfigure go we execute this oops wait so execute so configuration option show advanced options change from zero to one so now we enable the advanced options now we can enable the xp underscore cmd shell so sp configure this time will be here we replace this one with xp underscore cmd shell okay leave everything as is and execute so now as you can see configuration option xp underscore cmd shell change from zero to one run the reconfigure statement to install okay reconfigure all right so now that we have enabled the xp underscore cmd shell now let's turn our heads to the sa user we need to grant the privileges to all users in the current database to use the sa user right so to do that we have to execute again a couple of commands so use master and then we're going to grant impersonate on login to which user sa and the permissions will be from sa to 
all other users or public it's safer to name it or to choose public here okay let's make sure this command is executed all right so now we have given the permissions from SA to all users to impersonate the SA user. Now we can start configuring the triggers, right? So enable the XP and this XP underscore CMD shell, and we grant permissions to all, or to grant the privileges to all users. Now let's start configuring the triggers. We will use a database called HRDP, which can be found here. This is database. I'm going to use it. HRDB. Okay. Our trigger here, guys, will leverage XP underscore CMD shell to execute PowerShell in order to load and run a PowerShell script from a web server controlled by the attacker. So let's go ahead and first create a PowerShell script. Uh, we'll do it on my machine. So sudo now, or let's say nano, back, let's name it evil script in order to get the flag, we have to stick with the names in the challenge. So evil script ps1. And let's copy the full code. You can find the code in the list of the notes. So here we will configure the IP address of my machine. And the port, you can keep it as is or change it to your preferred port. Everything else will um, apparently stay the same. So we save this and we are ready to serve the script. So sudo python 3-m HTTP server Kali. and now we're ready to serve the payload guys let's go ahead now and configure a trigger to download and execute the script whenever an insert operation is performed so we go back okay so use hrtb and now let's create a trigger to create a trigger guys we have to use create trigger and here we name the trigger let's name it sql backdoor okay that's the name of the trigger next we will specify if we expand this guy as you can see we have a couple tables database diagrams tables and we have views system views storage Okay. Diagrams. All right, we'll go through that now. Okay. So on H R D P D B O employees table, and he will specify the kind of trigger. It will be insert for insert as and down there we specify the kind of action that will get executed when an insert trigger uh, is witnessed or performed so execute as login equal sa so we will execute the command all right as an the sa user all right and then we will specify what we want to execute cmd shell and here we specify the command so it will be downloading and executing the payload we can specify it in partial for shell dash c and we will download it new object let me see if i have it here
باشه get c a command to download this one seems good okay change the name to evil script ps1 and we're gonna need to retrieve the IP address one more time okay so this seems fine need to close the single code and to put a semicolon so let's execute now and see what's gonna happen Let's go back to the machine, make sure that we have the web server is listening for incoming requests and we're going to split the view and open up a listener to receive the shell. So upon execution now, we should receive a request to download the script and execute it. All right, now after we have configured everything, the rest is to trigger or to have the trigger on. So we're gonna go to the website that is hosting this database and perform an insert, all right, in order to download the uh, factor. So let's see. Well, let's do it via my machine. It will be way better. So open Firefox. okay so what we're going to do here guys as you can see this is the website all right on which database was established so basically as you can see it contains first name last name extension information about the employees so whenever we insert uh, the details about an employee it will add the employee information to the employee database right and since we have configured the trigger to get executed whenever an insert operation is performed on the database or the tab or employee tables we're going to add a new employee here to simulate an insert operation so since the web application now will send an insert statement to the database right our, when we add the employee our trigger will provide us access to the system console hopefully so let's add a new employee test one extension 8888 test one test one dot com add okay let's see I think nothing have been added so we got two entries have been added now we should be receiving the request on the web server Uh, yet we haven't received anything let's wait for a while so maybe we have to change this okay so let's use dash c here modify the query or the um, command that's used to download the partial script and i'm going to use here ix new object will say the same net.web client we're going to change this to net.web client and here download going to make a download string so the attacker information will stay the same but we're gonna cancel this okay and we're gonna execute this time we will create a new trigger say v2 all right now let's try to add an employee
test two test two nine 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 at test two dot com. Let's see. Okay, as you can see, we received the request and we have received a reversal. So this time it worked. Checking out the web. Okay. ID. We still haven't fully received the connection, but it worked, guys. As you can see, we received the request on the web server and we received the connection from the compromise machine but we might need to work a bit on the payload to make the shell fully usable so we're going to yeah so we received the full shell now okay so let's navigate to c cd flags and the flags this time will be flag 17 flag 17 I live in your database. Okay. All right. Let's talk about flag 16 here. Flag 16 is very simple, guys. All you have to do is to upload an ASB shell, right, to the web server directory. So there are many videos you can find on my channel on how to upload an ASB shell, right? So you can load any ASP, ASPX shell to the uh, root directory. Let me show you how to do it from here quickly, of course. So we're going to go here. See. Okay, you're going to create here a shell, all right, in the form of ASPX or the extension ASPX. Upload it here, and once you upload it, guys, you will be able to receive the shell. So basically. ASPX shell can be found uh, on the web or you can find it through my notes in the um, reverse shell file. So after we upload the shell to the www.root directory, you go to this path okay, and execute system commands. And that's how you will be able to execute flag 16. Okay guys, so that was it for today. I hope you enjoyed the series guys and in the next video, I will definitely start something that you will like. Thank you for watching.